These are black powder cartridges. They're so soft that, uh, and thin walled typically, that using one of these little hand uh, formers works pretty good. So that's an adapter for in the field. I mean, you can have a hand primer. There's all sorts of ways to prime. I have various primers, but just to make the most compact uh, field kit possible, this adapter here lets you prime on this uh, hand press. And my my preferred, you know, like when I'm reloading cartridges for all my regular smokeless rifles and handguns is I have on press priming and off press priming this unit though I just happen to have because my wife inherited some stuff from her grandfather's estate and he liked to reload in the field for one of his handguns and so I thought hey you know I can put this to use with my old 3840 and make a nice little setup for in the field where I'm not having to carry too many tools and you know you should use uh, by the way hearing protection and I'm just setting all this stuff up right now trying it right here at my desk before I go out in the field so make sure I got all the little tools and dippers and scoops and everything I can think of that I need before I get out there and try using it in the field kind of a shakedown run so uh, right now I'm at, I set up the uh, flaring die basically with a lead bullet yeah, and especially with paper thin black powder cartridges uh, these things will fold up easy if you don't have it to where the bullet goes in there pretty easy but you can see the bullet doesn't really fit in there now this is belled just enough to where it'll set in there. You don't want to flare it too much. You want there to be some friction going in, but you don't want it shaving lead and you don't want to fold your neck. Um, so it's a little bit of trial and error here getting it set up to where you've got the right amount to shove the bullet in. Later we'll be able to you know crimp down, but um, that's what's going on with that right now. Now Lee makes these as pour through dies and if this was a mounted uh, unit I'll show you quickly if I can try to they make it to where their funnel fits in here so you could fill each one right after you flare it and then when you bring this down you've got an already filled case but in the field this is a lot to like not spill your powder so I'll flare them first then fill them then put the bullet in not trying to cut a step here although this thing would allow you to do that on a on a mounted press I've never really had use for the adjustable lead dipper that they make but maybe for this I do so the 2.5 holds like 36.8 36.9 it's like 37 grains essentially unfortunately the 2.8 which is the next size up Holds like 41.2, 41.3, something like that, which is just a little too much. You can get by with that. It just so happens the bullets I'm using are not exactly period correct. Uh, they would have a slightly longer nose to them. Um, these have a, a, a deeper base, so I'm actually seating them a little bit deeper than they would normally be, and it works out. Um, I mean, you could also use filler, wad, whatever in there, but that's enough. I think that the minimum loads I've seen are like 36 with about a 164 grain bullet. And then, uh, you know, so this is just under 40 and I'm getting compression, so it'll work out. I've done this before, but anyway, I just wanted to show you part way through the process these are seated they're not crimped yet um, and these are just filled and I'll place a bullet on top of them I've got my bullet seating die uh, I set that up here at the desk as well so far it's worked out pretty good here at the desktop on a nice day like it is today doing it out in the field would be
cool, but if it was it rains here all the time in Washington or blows wind, uh, there'd be little things scattering around here that wouldn't they wouldn't be as fun. But on a nice day, I could see doing this out in the field at you know pickup truck gate and uh, do some shooting. Essentially, you just put one in here like this, keeping it all vertical because you don't want to spill powder or anything like that. Just bring this up in here. Take it out. Then this will go. I'll set up a crimp die up in here to crimp later. You can do a taper crimp with this, you know, but I found that if you adjust this to where you start getting your taper crimp, and your brass aren't exactly all the exact same length, you're gonna, especially with these paper thin type uh, cartridge cases, um, crinkle a neck and, you know, be cursing. So it's just easier to do two steps and then I have a separate crimp die that looks like that. So if you happen to have an actual uh, Winchester 1873. I've got one that belonged to my great great uncle. He was born. I never met the guy. He died 20 full 20 years before I was born, but uh, like 1948 or something. But um, he was born in 1887, and this particular 1873 was made in 1887. So I don't know if he got it because his dad got it for him or. Because when he was born, or if he got it because he thought it was cool that it had it was same age as, you know, him or what, but it got handed down to family and never treated correctly. So I finally got a hold of it and have kind of worked on it and got it going good. But uh, this is the best way to maximize your velocity out of one of those is using black powder. So this might be hard to show, but they go be from being after the bullet's pushed in, that's still slightly flared and square, and then see how that's been crimped now, just a little bit crimped. That's what I'm doing with them right now, with that die. Just so you know, I. It might take you longer when you're doing your initial setup with a hand press like this, but I maybe spent, I don't know, 10 to, let's say 12, 15 minutes setting up and completing those, right? Once I had all my die set, set up to this press, right? This second 10, maybe five to seven minutes. I mean, easily cuts it in half once you've got your dies set up. And this is just a alternative method, so now I can reload in the field. Now, this is at the desktop level. I mean, once I'm out on a tailgate, the time may increase, but um, I think I was able to, with a hand press, turn out fairly decent black powder rounds. These are 3840. I do have, uh, these are repurposed cases. These are... Uh, Actually, these are 3840 cases here, and these uh, these Remington cases are 4440 that have been re uh, resized. Uh, and I'll take those out and shoot those in my uh, 1873. I started talking about it a little earlier in another video. The way to safely maximize your maximum velocity out of those old guns like that that are black powder is to use black powder. All your smokeless, you can kind of creep up on max velocity, but um, more dangerously, because you can actually load 3840 up to close to 2,000 feet per second for like a Model 92 Winchester, and you wouldn't ever want to shoot that in the 1873. Uh, but uh, the smokeless powder doesn't fill it up in here you have a real hard time getting the adequate crimp to uh, hold it. If you find uh, factory cartridges, 
they typically have a front crimp and rear crimp to hold the bullet when they've got just a little tiny bit of smokeless powder in them. Um, yeah, you could try to use trail boss, but again, you can't get nearly the velocity that you can with uh, just using black powder. Um, so they're really the only advantage on the smokeless is cleanup. Um, but nowadays, you know, our primers aren't corrosive. These seal real well to the chamber. You know, you just got a little black powder residue in there. Um, part of how these uh, tolerate the pressures, because if you've ever seen an 1873 bolt, they don't, they're not very substantial and they just kind of push against it. This case expands very rapidly and that friction of the case in the chamber is what holds the pressure back helps the bolt hold the pressure back so something to be aware of uh, I think they'll be fun to shoot now really the only part missing to this gun is there's a cleaning kit rod that's supposed to be in the butt, in the butt stock this was like a sporting mountain version uh, so it had that not all of them had a cleaning rod but this one did and then it had this, uh, what they called high visibility. It's like got uh, sterling silver inlay. And then the rounded barrel, that was the sporter. Um, has decent wood on it. But like I say, because of this is a, you know, pre-smokeless, you really should only run black powder in it. I mean, you can use some of those smokeless powders that, and it had decent wood, like I say, it had this kind of tiger striping on it. Um, something I've noticed this one has that a lot of them, the uh, brass lifter in here must get a little bit gummed up or something happens. And you'll see them, they'll get, it's been beat on. Someone decided that they need to beat on that to free it up. I'm sure that it was in between cleanings and whatnot. And I've, but I've seen other old Winchesters like this that have that same telltale thing on it. I don't know if this is 24. Twenty-six. Um, but, um, let's see here, I got any good, so obviously, uh, let's see if I can get it to focus on it, 3840 was actually by Winchester known as 38 WCF, um, the adjuster for this was missing, as one thing I was like, I, I take it, so there was the cleaning rod and that adjuster. We've looked and looked and looked. Um, we can't find either of them in my grandfather's old stuff. But I found, fortunately, a lady online that had some old Winchester parts. Uh, her father had recently passed away. And basically, I got that just for... She sent me a bunch of photos of stuff, and I told her what it was and what its potential value was. And so she sent me a few things I wanted uh because some of the screws on this had become jacked up over time and things like that so i got a new screw set for it and an adjuster and things like that so bore is a little bit miserable um there's a guy here in washington that back bore your guns actually bore them out re-sleeve them uh, thought about taking it in and having him do that. The links, the toggle links are good. That's why I'm not really afraid of it. Um, I did have to refile the sear. It was starting to slip off of sear. That was a bit of a process because none of these are drop-in parts. You can get replacement parts, but they're not drop-in. you got to hand fit them. So I basically had to take it out, sandwich it between some copper plates, add metal to where the sear notch was, and then hand file it with a little diamond file and then reassemble and try it and several times and then I got half nut half cock and full cock 
back and then I tuned it up a little bit at that time and now it's uh, ready to go should uh, be fun it is a little bit of a lug though uh, it doesn't have any kick it's funny because I read an old article that 3840 was for the people that couldn't really tolerate kick and I'm like by our today's standard, there is no kick in this thing, so. Anyway. That's it. I'll let you know how it does. I might make a video out shooting it, too.